uh, it will be about the role of the core analysis in planning the development activities for a certain field. Okay, so our today's ad agenda, we will talk about the types of core analysis tests and the field development plan definition. Then we can introduce some applications for the core analysis data. First, we have we have four types, uh, or more than these types, for the core analysis tests. We have the routine tests, we have the special tests, we have the geomechanical tests, we have the formation damage tests. As we can we can see from the big picture, several tests are being performed in this small piece of rock that's taken from the reservoir. Okay. We have the scene section, XRD, uh, CSEMM uh, testes, and special and routine testes, and all these tests that are carried on the, the core uh, sample. For the routine testes, we have four main measurements for the routine testes. We have the porosity measurements, we have the permeability measurements, we have the saturation, and mainly the water saturation to correlate to the, to the recorded well logs in the well, we have also the measurement for the grain dynasty. These measurements are essentially are made to correct the well logs results and correlate the well logs from the cord from the cord interval, and then take this correlation to be used into the uncored the non cord intervals in in other wheels, okay? Example for using the routine testes, like tune the Archie equation. All we know the Archie equation parameters the A, M, N. Then we can use the core, the routine test results to tune this parameters or this constants into the Archie equation until having match between the interpretation results and the core or the actual core tests. Also, if we have if we have a measurement for the porosity and the permeability, we can rock type the reservoir interval. We can make rock typing for the reservoir to know how many rock types are found into the reservoir. Also, we can have a correlation between the porosity and the permeability. Then we can use this correlation between the porosity and the permeability in the non cord interval to assist or to estimate the permeability, okay? Also, we can, as we mentioned, that we can make rock typing for the rest of all. For the special testes, we have many testes for the special testes. As from its name, it is performed for a special target, a special target. And it isn't routinely made for all core uh, for all cool sums. Okay, the first special test is the relative permeability measurement. The relative permeability measurement is mainly is mainly used for multi-phase modeling. What is what is the meaning for multi-phase modeling? If we have more than one phase, like water and oil, or gas and oil, and we want to know which phase will move faster, will, which phase will more, will more flowing into the reservoir rock. So the relative permeability is used for the multi-phase modeling in case that, in case that we have more than one phase flowing into the reservoir. Also, we have the capillary pressure. The capillary pressure mainly is used to, to determine the thickness, the thickness for the transition zone, the thickness of the transition zone. What is what is the transition zone? The transition zone is a zone between the not the net oil interval and the net water interval. So the saturation into this zone is medium or between the oil and water. So the capillary pressure is used to determine the water saturation into the transition zone between the oil lake and 
the water aquifer interval okay wetability wetability uh wetability is a measurement of the rock tendency to adhere some fluid for example if we have an oil with reservoir that means that the rock surface of this reservoir will adhere more oil than the water with reservoir okay and this factor is a main, a main factor into the criteria for selection the EUR applications okay for the rock compressibility the rock compressibility is very important it's very important parameter into determination into determination the oil recovery the oil recovery it is a mean for the reservoir energy it is a parameter that that contribute mainly into the support of the reservoir of the reservoir energy okay so from the rock measurement we can have actual actual measurement for the rock compressibility and use this rock compressibility into into determination the amount of oil recovery from the reservoir also from the specialties are the acoustic properties the acoustic properties like like determination that the slowness the slowness for the compressional wave for the shear waves into the core sample and use this properties to calibrate the wheel loops also the acoustic properties are mainly correlated to the geomechanical properties okay many correlations are using the acoustic properties into determination the geomechanical properties like the uss and the stresses and other properties the electrical properties the electric properties are mainly mainly used to tune the Archie equation parameter. As we mentioned, that we have three constants into the Archie equation. Okay, so we are using the electric properties measurement into the the core data or the core sample to tune the Archie equation parameters or constant the AMN to correlate to correlate or to match the will looks results and the core analysis results, okay? Other tests like the XRD and SEM, these tests are carried to know the, uh, the, the mineral, the mineralogy for the reservoir look. Also for the formation damage for like uh, due to the fine migration or the clay swelling, also for the acidizing to know the mineralogy for the core or the reservoir rock to, to determine the appropriate treatment uh, amounts and design for acidizing. Okay. Third type for the core analysis tests are the geomechanicals, the geomechanical tests. Okay. As from its name, it is a combination between the geological properties for the rock and the mechanical properties for the rock. Okay, so we can find several properties, several geomechanical properties for uh, from or that measured from the core analysis tests, like the unconfined compressive stress using the UCS or the unconfined compressive stress. They are used into many applications, like like the tendency or the estimation, the tendency for certain reservoir to have sand production. Then, then using the value for the UCS into determine the critical, the critical rate for sand production. Okay. Another meaning for the compressive strength is that the core cylinder, also the tensile strength are, uh, is used into uh, stress measurements uh, for the min or max uh, stress estimation, bore volume compressibility, elastic molars, and all these parameters are used into some correlations to determine to determine some phenomena or some application parameters that will assist into the development for certain field. Okay, so. For the field development plan definition, 
The field development plan definition is that it involves the design of all properties or all the proposed activities, all the proposed activities and scenario to explore, appraise, and develop a certain field. So if we have a new field, if you have a new field, so you should have a plan for the drilling, how you will explore this, uh, this field, the well placement for the new wells, where to drill the new wells, okay? Also the facilities, how much water will be pro 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 produced, how much water will be produced. So we have two phases. You can remember that the relative permeability, the relative permeability is controlling the multi-phase flowing. Okay, so there is a relation between the relative permeability, that is a core data, and the facilities, the facilities design. Because if we can expect from the relative permeability that the water will move faster than the oil, so we can expect that we will have a water or a great water production to our, so our production facilities should be ready to receive this amount of water on the surface, okay? Also, for the drilling activities, we should know the amount of, or the number of wells that is sufficient to have a great recovery or the optimum recovery from, uh, from oil into this reservoir. How, how we can place the wells? That is a function mainly into the compressibility, okay? Also the wheel path design. Wheel path design, you can remember that. You can remember that the geomechanical tests that carried onto the core data. The wheel path design will depend on the stresses, okay? And the stresses can be estimated from the core data, okay? also the well spacing, the, the distance between the wells. Also, it will depend on uh, the core data from some ways, okay? Also the production activities, the production activities. What about the recovery methods? What can or how much oil we can expect to produce using the primary and secondary recovery method from this field? Okay, also the expected performance. The, so the expected performance from the tight reservoir is different from the expected performance from the high quality, the high quality reservoir. Okay, also all, all these parameters are reflected into the economics for the project or from, for, are reflected onto the, pro, the project economics. So we wanted to know how core analysis data will contribute to the development activities. We have several applications for core analysis data, like probability modeling, fish distribution modeling, the production prediction, residual oil saturation, and its relation to the EUR methods, the stoic calculation, and sand control and many, many applications that are using the core analysis data. First, the permeability modeling. We should know that the will looks, the density and the neutron, that is conventional, that are conventional looks that are logged or recorded in every will and can estimate the porosity, can estimate the porosity. But, but we should have a core data about the porosity to, to compare the core porosity to the density and the neutron porosity and make or attune or make a correlation between the wheel logs property, porosity and the uh, core porosity, okay? Also, we have the NMR, the NMR uh, log. This look can indicate the moving and non-moving fluids, 
okay the mobility we can know the mobility from the mdt but all these logs can't estimate the permeability we know that one of the results of the nmr is the permeability but you should know that the permeability that is showed into the log of the nmr is permeability estimated by a correlation estimated by a correlation depending on the irreducible water saturation and the porosity and not measure permeability not measured permeability no we look can measure the permeability only just estimate the permeability okay but the permeability is measured into the routine core analysis okay so we can model the permeability we can know we can model the permeability our goal our goal from the measurement of the permeability is that we can that we want a correlation we want a correlation between the porosity that is that is measured by the wind looks and the permeability that is measured in the routine core analysis the routine core analysis so we can use this correlation into the wells that has no core data that has no core data okay so this modeling the modeling methods this this modeling modeling that we can find a correlation between the porosity and the other parameters like the water saturation and the permeability we have two methods for modeling the permeability first we can correlate we can create a correlation a correlation between the look porosity that is found in every well by using the density and the neutral logs and acoustic logs if it's found in some wells okay so the first method is that we can find a correlation between the log porosity and the core permeability and use this correlation into the wells that has no core data okay so that is the first method for modeling the permeability the second method is that we have into the literature many correlations that are relating the porosity to the permeability but these correlations has many constants so we can use some software like the tick look or the ip to tune the constant for this correlation until having a match between the predicted correlation permeability and the core measured permeability okay so these are the two methods for the permeability okay so we know that from the core data we can have a model for the permeability how this is reflected into the development activities we have a case study we have a case study we have an oil well that producing from a massive reservoir thickness okay so this oil is producing oil only okay from a reservoir and we want to know the production contribution from each interval okay we want we want to know which interval that contribute mainly into the production from this field from this will all the petroleum professionals can answer this question is that the simple answer is using plt is using a plt okay but in some cases we cannot run plt like we have a dead a dead well the dead well that that means that it can't produce naturally okay so in this case we have complications to make or to run a plt but the, the surprise that if we have 
poor data into this well, we can use the permeability measurements from the core data to have a pseudo-ability. How we can do that? How we can do that? First, we can calculate the reservoir quality index, the RQI, and the flow, the flow, the flow, the fluid zone indicator. We have the correlation between the RQI and permeability and the porosity, then the normalized porosity and the fluid zone indicator. Okay, that is the ratio between the RQI and the normalized porosity. Okay, then plot the RQI over the ratio between the RQI and the cumulative RQI versus the depth. As we can see, as we can see, this is the dips, okay? And this is the RQI over the cumulative RQI, okay? The intervals that has the highest ratio, so this interval will have the most, the, the, the most, the most fantastic, the highest, quality into the reservoir. So the highest quality will relate to the highest contribution to the production, okay? So we can see from this plot, we have this, we have a sloping, a sloping, a sloping relation or a sloping curve into the highest quality intervals, okay? We have also this interval, but this interval has nearly vertical, nearly vertical line that representing the RQI over the QM RQI. So the quality of the reservoir into this interval is not good, okay? So also, so we can notice from the curve of RQI over the QM RQI that this intervals that mark it into the green that the highest contribution for the production came from this interval, okay? So, so if we have a permeability measurement from the core that is taken into this interval, we can have, or we can expect the result for a PLT run. Also, we have another application for the core data, like the facies distribution modeling. What is the meaning for the facies distribution modeling? As we know that all the reservoirs, all the reservoirs has a depositional concept, has a depositional concept. In other way, if we are making a static model for the reservoir. So we should put, we should put a depositional modeling for the reservoir. The depositional modeling is telling us where to find the highest quality phases, okay? And where to find the lowest quality phases according to the deposition according to the deposition. And some literature, some literature are relating, are relating, for example, for sandstone reservoir, they are relating the gamma ray and the spontaneous look to the quality of sand, okay? But, but as we know that the log data, the log data is affected by the will poor conditions, okay? So the data from the will look about how fine the sand into this will or how good the sand into this other will, we can confirm this data by using the lithology determination from actual core samples, okay? So if we have core samples, from these wheels, we can confirm the observation 
that is made by the gamma ray or the spontaneous look into these wells. So what after that? After that, we can, we can have a reliable depositional modeling for the reservoir. Like for this example, we have a channel sand. We have a channel sand. So the optimum well placement, the optimum location to drill a new well into the middle of this, of this sand channel to have the highest thickness for the reservoir. Okay? But but if we have no, if we have not reliable deposition modeling for the reservoir, we can have a risk to have a dry well that is drilled into the side of the sand channel. That is because we have we have no core data that is confirming the well look observation. Okay. Also, from the measurements of the core analysis, the relative permeability, as we mentioned before that, the relative permeability, the relative permeability is a measure, is a measure of how the fluid is able to move, or in other meaning, produced into pre, in, in the presence of another fluid, in the presence of another fluid. So from, from this from this plot, we have the red one for the oil width and the oil one, the, the, the other curve for the water width. So we can expect into the oil width environment or the oil width reservoir, we can have much water production. Because, because the relative permeability or the water relative permeability in the oil with environment has a higher, higher relative permeability for the water. In the other side, for the for the oil relative permeability, in the oil with environment, we will have less oil production. We have less oil production. Okay. So we introduced the relative permeability definition and how the relative permeability affect on the production from the certain reservoir. We have also the capillary pressure. The capillary pressure is a property that is related, that related to the migration of the oil, the migration of the oil. First, all the sediments, after the deposition are filled by wood, okay? Are filled by water. Then the oil is formed into a source rock. Then a crack occurred into this source rock. So the oil will go up to until reaching the reservoir rock. Then because of the density difference between the oil and water and all over this time, the oil will go up, will go up. But we have some tiny or, or low pores, low pores, low quality pores. Okay. So some water will be trapped into these pores. The, some water will be trapped into this pores. So the trapping fluid will exert additional additional pressure additional pressure into the oil column the difference the difference between the oil pressure and the normal the normal pressure using the gradient of the water is called the capillary pressure so the capillary pressure is the difference between the non wetting fluid pressure and the wetting or the water fluid pressure. Okay. So the capillary pressure is responsible of the transition zone thickness between the oil leg and the water leg. Okay. And as the quality of the reservoir is low, the capillary pressure will be high. 
and the thickness of the transition zone between the net oil reservoir or net oil interval and the water interval will be higher and high. Okay? So, depending on the capillary pressure, the depending on the capillary pressure, the saturations into the transition zone is determined by using the capillary pressure. Okay, so we have we have application for the relative permeability and the capillary pressure to forecast or the prediction for the production. How is that? As we are using as we are using the reservoir simulation, the first the first step into the dynamic reservoir simulation is called the initialization. It's called the initialization. The initialization is mean, it's meaning that the distribution of fluid saturations using the capillary pressure, using the capillary pressure. Okay. Then if we have if we have the saturation, if we know the capillary pressure, that is the difference. That is the difference between the pressure into the non-weighting phase and the pressure into the weighting phase. Then if we have the value for the capillary pressure, so we can go horizontally until intersecting the curve for the capillary pressure. Then we can know the water saturation. We can know the water saturation using the water saturation from the capillary pressure into the curve for the relative permeability, we can know the relative permeability for oil and the capillary pressure or the relative permeability for water. As we know that the water cut, the water cut is a function into the ratio between the water relative permeability and the oil relative permeability, we can expect the water cut that produced from a certain reservoir by using the integration between the capillary pressure and the relative permeability. Another measurement that is made into the core analysis is the rock compressibility. As we can notice from the equation of the material balance that indicate the support for the reservoir after production, a main parameter into, into determine the support for the reservoir energy is the rock compressibility, the rock compressibility, okay? So, if we have a reliable rock compressibility measurement from the core data, we can use this rock compressibility into the material pass calculations and also into the reservoir simulation. Rather than that, we can use some correlations, but as we know that the actual data is more reliable than just using a correlation, okay? So we have a case study. We have a case study for running material balance, material balance calculations to simulate the, or to expect, or to make a prediction for the production using a certain value for the relative permeability and the, we can vary or using a several uh, another value for the relative permeability and show and show the effect of relative permeability and rock compressibility on the recovery from this field. Okay, so we have an embel embel model. Okay, we entered the fluid data, the GOR, oil gravity, gas gravity, and the water salinity and use the correlation 
to estimate the BBT theta for this reservoir, okay? Then, for the reservoir, we assume that the temperature, that value, the initial reservoir, pressure, velocity, the connect water saturation, and the original oil in place, we will have 100 million standard barrel, okay? Also, we assume that we will have, we will have an aquifer that's connected to the reservoir with this, with this properties. Also, also, we have several, several options to estimate the rock compressibility, okay? We will assume that the rock compressibility just, it is assumption, okay? By this value, and the relative permeability, the relative permeability, we can assume that the connect water saturation is about 20%, the same as the oil, and this is the critical gas saturation. The end point, it is the maximum value for the water, relative permeability, one for the maximum oil relative permeability, and one for the gas relative permeability, the exponent for Curie correlation, we can assume that it will be two for all the phases, okay? Then we want to predict, we want to predict the, we want to predict the production into the future, okay? Then done, then going to, the prediction and we want we want to have we want to have about 10,000 oil barrel from this reservoir until zero reservoir pressure then click down then run the prediction Okay, so for this reservoir, we will have a, the recovery factor about 40 pairs, about 40 pairs, okay? Let's, let's change the rock compressibility and see this effect on the oil recovery, okay? So we change it, exploring, to be six instead of five, okay? Then click on, then run the prediction. So we have the maximum oil recovery in case of leg, less compressibility is about the half, it's about the half. So if, we, if you don't have a reliable rock compressibility, it is very risky, very risky to run production prediction because you don't have actual data for the rock compressibility, okay? Okay, so we can save this scenario under the name of, of base scenario. Okay, then click save, then going again to the relative permeability. We will ch change some parameter into the relative permeability and see the difference into the recovery, see the difference into the recovery when we change the relative permeability. Okay, then click done. Then going again to the prediction and okay. Then we want to plot. We want uh, to plot. But before that, we can 
name the scenario on her another scenario. Then click OK. Then plot. We want we want we want to plot the water production the water production between into the two scenarios okay so we have the water production for the base scenario and the water production also for the other scenario as we can see that the water production is very different is very different it is a great dependent on the relative permeability so if you don't have a relative relative permeability so you will have a risk in multi-phase predict production prediction okay okay so from this case study we learned that if we don't have a reliable a reliable data for the relative permeability and also the rock compressibility you will have a risk into the reservoir production prediction okay and so on for all the properties for the uh, the reservoir uh, rock okay also we have for the ur applications we have the residual oil saturation as we know that the oil the eur application is mainly targeting the reservoir the residual oil saturation okay so without measurement for the residual residual oil saturation you will not have estimation for the amount of the targeted recoverable oil by the eur mechanisms okay last for sand control as we mentioned that the sand control if you have a wind that is producing sand you should have some parameter some properties that that is measured on core samples on core samples to have a reliable data to predict sand pro problems the sand problems is are very severe problems for the development of such of some fields especially for the offshore fields especially for the offshore fields it will have additional cost into the project economics so we should have accurate actual data for the geomechanical properties that responsible for the sand production one of these properties is the UCS. The UCS is the uniaxial compressive strength. We have this equipment and a core is put into the apparatus until, until, and up, then applying a stress on the core until crashing the core. So the maximum stress without crashing, without crashing the core, it is the uniaxial compressive strength for the sand production we want to know the bottom hole or the critical bottom hole pressure for sand production after or less this or less than this bottom hole pressure you will have sand production as we can see that all these parameters into this equation are core data they are core data by having by having this core data reliable reliable core data we can expect this bottom hole pressure and construct that plot that indicate the region for no sand production and the region for severe sand production also we have another case study for for the production prediction using integration between the wheel logs and the skull data. 
or the special test or the relative permeability measurement. So we have an oil well that was drilled and blocked with a resistivity tool. Okay, we have the reading for the resistivity into the reservoir zone. We have the resistivity, resistivity into the water zone. We have the porosity. We know that it is consolidated sandstone lithology. The stable for the relative permeability data. Also, we have some raw data for the BVT. Okay. We have a simple Excel sheet. Okay. Simply, simply, we will use, we will use the Archie equation. We will use the Archie equation to estimate the water saturation and the oil saturation. Then using the oil saturation and water saturation, and by modeling the relative permeability data using the Curie model, we will know we will know the relative permeability for water and the relative permeability for oil. And from this correlation, from this correlation of water oil ratio, that is function of relative permeability for water and oil, and the BVT data for water and oil we can know the water oil ratio. And also we can know the expected water oil ratio. But before going to this calculation, I just want everyone, everyone to, to expect a water cut from this well. Okay, but after, but after we calculate the water saturation, okay? Okay. So for the porosity, it is about 10%. For the M into the Archie equation, we have consolidated sand. So we will use two. For the N is usually to be two. For, for A, for A, it is about 0.91, uh, 81. And for the resistivity into the water zone is about 3.1, 3.1. And also the resistivity value is about 30, 20. Okay. So we have the water saturation about 0.39, okay? So after you saw the water saturation into this interval, please predict the water cut and write your expectation into the shaft, okay? Okay. Then we will enter the relative permeability data. Okay. Okay. But we want to estimate the exponents for correlation. So we will use a solver. Okay. So we estimated the Curry exponent for the Curry model. Okay. Okay. Then entering the BBT data. Copy this data to the Excel sheet. So, so 
using the relative the relative water uh, permeability and the oil relative permeability we can expect that we will have water oil ratio for 8.6 and the expected water cut will be about 89.6 okay so after after our webinar we learn it how important having reliable core data okay and without core data you will have a great risk into your planning for the development of your reservoir okay about our course our course will be 5 days it will be it will be a mixture between the examination of the experimental measurements how these experiments are done into the lab how to qc the results of these experiments and also how to use this data into the engineering application that is the main goal for the core analysis measurements okay okay and also before examining that we will introduce the well site coring practices from a practical view and also how to prepare the core samples for the experiments and how how to preserve the uh, core samples okay okay so we have four days for the theoretical and applications using excel sheets using excel sheets and using actual data from actual wells okay then we will have a one day for a course project okay this is the topics that will be examined through our course like how to prepare a coring program how to prepare the core samples, the uh, routine course analysis, the uh, scale analysis, the weightability, the capillary pressure, relative permeability measurements, the rock compressibles, how to make rock typing, and how to use this rock typing into the reservoir simulation, how to select representative samples for the scale measurements, and uh, also how to make or how to make or how to model, model the saturation height about we will talk about the saturation height modeling using the capillary pressure the first day we will talk about the well site practices the preparation cleaning drying porosity permeability measurements the second we will do uh, we will talk about the rock typing uh, the porosity uh, the porosity measure the porosity exponent the electrical properties for the core the capillary pressure, the methods for the capillary pressure measurements of like mercury injection and porous plate, how to design a scale program, okay, how to select samples for the scale program. Okay. The third day, we will talk about the reservoir saturation modeling, the NMR, and how to get some data from the core analysis to be used into the NMR interpretation. We will talk about the weightability and the methods to measure it like AMO test <clears throat> and the USPM and the effect of weightability in the, the on the reservoir recovery. For the day four, we will talk about the relative permeability, the unsteady method and the steady method and the other methods like uh, centrifugal relative permeability data, how to normalize and denormalize or the average the relative permeability data also for the capillary pressure we will talk about the g function and how to average the capillary pressure or generalize or standardize the capillary pressure data to be used into the reservoir simulation 
the day five, we will talk about, uh, we will have a project or a course project and all the attendees, we will have will have a hands-on Excel sheets, uh, Excel sheets to uh, have a practice on real data to use, to use the concepts that examined through the course, okay? You will have the recorded videos so that uh, you can have access for these videos for all the lifetime. We will, you will have the, also the lectures into the PDFs, also the project and the actual data. And the end, you will have a certification for the completion of this course, okay? So we finished our 